Fish Belly Lures proudly presents Chew on This with Captain Ben Chancy. Oh, he is on it. That's right. Hey, you guys, welcome to this edition of the Chew on This Saltwater Fishing Show. I'm here with Captain Byron Hennessy of Osceola Outback. Yes, sir. And we're fishing Outback, aren't we? We are. We're out back. Where are we, like, how many miles away from Kissimmee, are we? <laughs> Probably about 20. <laughs> hey, you guys, check that out. We're here catching Pharaoh Monday. Can you believe it? I mean, look at that fish. It's a beautiful fish. It's a relative to our snook here in Florida. Fat, strong, lean, and even has worse gill plates than uh, what we're used to on the snook. You guys, keep on watching. We're going to have a great show today. And we'll be right back. Welcome to the Chew On This Saltwater Fishing Show. Fishing television with intensity. Your host, Captain Ben Chansey, invites you to come along for some line singing, leader, friend, tackle, busting, action. Chew On This. Hey, if big fish is what you're looking for, then you've come to the right fishing show. Giant Goliaths, Monster Snook, Hungry Man Eating Sharks, Huge Redfish, and Big Time Tarpon. Chew, 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 chew on this. Fishing television with with intensity. Are you ready for some of the most intense, highly entertaining saltwater fishing you have ever seen? Then sit back, tighten up, and chew on this with Captain Ben Chancy. <laughs> <laughs> the Chew on This Saltwater Fishing Show is brought to you by Legendary Lake and Bay Custom High Performance Flats Boats. Fishing Guides Homepage. Free assistance planning your trophy fishing trip of a lifetime. Fish Belly Lures at fishbelly.com. Angela Chancy, your Southwest Florida realtor. I Avec Reels, just the best made reels, period. So these uh these are aerators? aerators yes sir, those I are guess? those are paddle wheels, uh run off three phase power. I just put in here, uh, just bring up oxygen levels in the water so that way it'll get a lot of overcast days. Not a lot of sunshine or late nights. Um, usually, the oxygen level doesn't deplete until you know your earliest, latest morning hours, around five, five thirty in the morning. I guess. Just you. like that's your coldest times of the of the night, you know. But uh, it's been the longest longest period without sunshine, without photosynthesis, so they can run the paddle wheels. With a higher oxygen content, then the thing to add more fish and <laughs> fish grow at a better rate, healthier fish. So. See, that's uh, you know, that's stuff that uh. Us guys who fish out in the wild, we don't know anything about well, that kind of thing, you know. Something we don't have to worry about. We got yeah. Mother Nature and wind for that. So. Yeah, exactly. We don't, we don't think of, uh, we don't even think of oxygen levels. I wouldn't think that uh, first thing in the morning. We're worried about the bait we're using and the lines we're tying. So. <laughs> exactly. So do you ever run all three at the same time, or usually? Uh, in this pond, we don't. Um, there's, there's a. Uh, I say only, but there's only 10,000 fish in this pond. So only 10,000. Only 10,000. So with, uh, with that, oops, there's a the fish. With that being said, <laughs> that's a good fish. With that being said, uh, one paddle wheel is sufficient because we do have water flowing in and, and exiting from the pond. So, okay. Um, so with the combination of the fresh water coming in and right. recirculating system, and with the paddle wheel, they get plenty of oxygen with this. The other ponds that they have here for food for the food fish. Uh, do have more fish in them, um, so they they run two wheels, two paddle wheels in that pond. Well, I tell you what, these are some fat fish. They are big and they are strong. Like I say, these fish are uh, about a year and year and two or a year and three months old, um, <laughs> and they were put in here at about 100 millimeters, which is about as long as your your uh, index finger. And so they have a, a real fast growth rate. About a half a pound to three quarters of a pound a month, these fish grow. Really? That is amazing. Like a dolphin, huh? Yes, sir. Almost that fast. Dolphin's a little bit faster, but. And so they got them from this size? And you said they're even up to 10 pounds, not this uh, size. Yeah. Like that. I love this size. Yeah, there are plenty of, them, plenty of them in here that big. And he was hungry, huh? He was. He swallowed it. He tried to. I like when they're aggressive like that. I don't know about you. I like uh, when they get busy. That's not, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Beautiful fish. The gill plates are sharp. That's the only thing you got to worry about with these fish. You said there were some barbs on there or something. You said huh? there's, a, there's a sticker barbs right here on my fingers that you can see them. There's actually four of them in here. There's one up top, one here with just top of the side of the gill plate. 
Uh, and this then, is the sharp edge, and then they have another cutting steel plate there too. And what are those for, you think? Why are uh, they that way? Defense, I guess. Um, where they come from on Australia, they probably have a few predators that, that comes in handy for. Well, um, I'm not real sure, but like, kind of like our snook. They're being the cousin of the snook, so. That's and you can see what the one fish. This is a new tide, new tide leader. It's 50 pound fluorocarbon. You can see what that does, what they, what they do with their mouth. Now this is probably from the edge of the gill plate, but yeah. this is definitely from the mouth. It's like a snow. A lot of light tackle guys think that we're doing something wrong here no. by over tackling. No, we're not. They're That's kind of uh, it right two now, fish, huh? two to three fish in that 50 pound fluorocarbon shot, you'll lose a jig. So we try to retie after two fish, three fish. Good stuff, real good stuff. I don't get a fish on this one. I'm putting me a jig head on. Put a jig head on. That's right. I, I know. got lucky. I know I gotta have a jig head. I got lucky. Figure. There he is. You don't need a jig head, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know what I'm talking about, huh? Oh no. What's well, first time? Well, yeah, you know, first bear Monday. There's no. Uh, I'll get out of your way. Let there's no. Uh, He's gonna probably come to that shore over there. Pushed in the water or anything. That's where they try to run the cover, so. Also, they are structure oriented yes, as well, if you, huh? We get around these culverts and these paddle wheels. You'll find that they try to run to them to break you off. So. Oh, I like that. That's, that's so they a, love the fight there. They're real smart. That's so how I like them. Come on, baby girl. Good fish. Heck yeah. A bear Monday. Oh, I see what you mean. See how they wrap around a gill yep, plate? That's they exactly love that. What I, was seeing. I guess we know what the gill plate is for. <laughs> Put it on you. Maybe nature knew we were going to have monofilament about 10,000 years later. <laughs> yep, they don't have teeth like a, just like a snook either, huh? Yep. Oh, come on, there, girl. Yeah, it's my first bear Monday ever, and I didn't have to go to Australia to catch it. You saved 34 hour plane ride. You know, and a lot of mosquito bites, and <laughs> yeah. we missed a lot of crocodiles as well. Yep. Beautiful fish. Look how tall it is from my thumb down to my finger. I don't know, this might be a two and a half, three pound fish. It's a fat little meaty thing. You bass guys, you guys are drools, you got a chance to catch some of these. Especially with how good they're biting here. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Go girl. <laughs> good stuff. This segment is brought to you by Angela Chansey, your Southwest Florida Realtor. I think these fish hit harder than, the, harder than the snook in the initial bite. Yeah. And when they slam it, they don't play. You know, you know you got a fish. Usually customers, they'll go, how, well, how, you know, we, well, I know I got a fish, and I try to drag it out as long as I can and wait until they hit it. <laughs> they get the big eyes and <laughs> the big breath. And, that's funny. So there's 10,000 fish in this pond, yes, right? Sir. And you said it's been going on for since what 13 months ago is when they yeah, first they, they started. They started bringing these fish here about that time. I'm not, you know, I can't give you an exact date. I don't know the exact date, but it's been around about that time, and uh, about October's. Um, when I approached them with the idea of doing, um, you know, fishing guide service out of it, a, mm -hmm. a, sea, a sea fishing type and type deal, and, and uh, they were real receptive to it, and they've been behind me pretty much the whole way, and they've given me exclusive rights. So I'm the only guy uh, allowed on the property. Can't beat that, can you? So you know, I don't have to worry about competition or yeah. you know, guys coming in, and and, 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 and like I said, all. I still let if a guy wants to bring his clients here, I can still do that. I just have to, I'll be here with them. So. <laughs> That way they can keep their customer. You know, I don't want, I don't want their customer. You know. No, oh, exactly. That's what it's all about. You got to help each other out because when yeah. it, at the end of the day, what it's all about is, is uh, keeping Florida the fishing capital of the world. So. Hey, that's exactly right. And this right, is, baby. This is just another way to do that for sure. I tell you what, man, I am ecstatic about this. This is awesome. Awesome, and he's a fat little heavy thing. <laughs> No, you guys, I hate to keep harping on it. Look at that, we got another one back there. It probably puts us about 10 already. I don't know how long we've been fishing, not very long. But uh, these guys are just fat and beautiful. Look at them. 
Oh, he's a nice fish. Their mouths aren't quite as big as Snooky. As you can see, oh, he got away on it. Their mouths aren't quite as big as Snook, but their body's a lot fatter. They're, they're neat looking. And we put these fish, we, we don't put barbs on them. So uh, they or actually we mash down the barbs. Byron does. So that way they don't, you know, get hooked, get hooked bad or anything like that. We don't lose any of them. It is fun. It's a blast. You guys get a chance. It might be the best fishing you'll ever do in your lives inshore. It is amazing. Inshore and land. I'm sorry. Whatever you want to call it, it is a blast. <laughs> yeah, you know how that works. He was just sitting. Old fish belly's doing his work here for me, huh? Come on, buddy. You <laughs> <laughs> first. Catching the fish without trying it. Slides down the bank with a fish on. <laughs> Come on now. You are good. <laughs> Look at that. Two firsts at one time. You guys are expecting a hundred pounder, huh? No. Nope. Uh oh. Foul hook. No wonder you got mad at me, is that yep. it? That's funny. <laughs> Look at that bear money there. Did you guys see that fish? He pulled it to the ground. That's not nice. It ain't even that big. Uh oh, buddy. That's one of the reasons for using a barbless hook, though, huh? Yep. No damage. There we go. Check out that little man. That's not very nice pulling me to the bottom of the ground like that. All right, look at that tail. I think he's got a little bit of Goliath grouper in him. Flat tail. Got virus, so that's the reason why they're pretty powerful. He took the all polar snook. Bigger, wider tail. I guess makes them a little bit stronger. All right, buddy, back in the water. There he is. <laughs> Oh, he's going crazy. He's not at him. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, I like you. I can see a little acrobatic thing. And you were hungry. All right, baby. Look at that, you guys. Fish really wearing them out. Not only do they catch the, all the fish of the United States, they also catch the fish of Australia, too. Ah, come here, baby. Come here, look at that one. About a seven pounder right there, for sure a little fat thing. Could you imagine this fish, 120 pounds? <laughs> I wouldn't be fishing with a little spinning rail, needless to say. All right, baby, thank you very much. Get them out of here. This segment is being brought to you by Lake and Bay Backwater. So, when I seen with the head, and I, I thought, man, wouldn't it be awesome? Some way I could work it where I could fish anytime I wanted to, you know. <laughs> so the, the first initial response was trying to get myself in here to fish, <laughs> and then uh, you know after that we, we decided well there's, there's, there's a lot of market. Oh, it had to be killer. Um, yeah. and, and to be able to put on your website or to advertise it, you are the only Fair Monday fishing guide oh, in the right. whole United States of America, and from what we know, the whole northern hemisphere of the world. You can't beat that. That's, that in itself it kind of makes the hair on the back of your neck. Stand up. Yeah, you were the only, the only Goliath group of fish oh, in exactly. the nation. <laughs> if, if you're anything like me, whenever it came time to, when the idea came, and then whenever you were going to ask them, you probably were just so nervous and excited. I was beside myself. Oh, you know, ready to go. And, like a little kid at Christmas. Yeah, time, exactly. Waiting on that answer. But they were real receptive to it. Um, in Australia, they would say they guide them in Australia all the time. And it's, it's probably different, you know, like tell me different here in Portland. Fish yeah. Everybody comes from all over the world to fish for them, but they don't have what we have here in America. Um, to the to the point that they don't have guys that are riding around in sponsor trucks and boats and making three hundred thousand these dollars a year, million dollars a year on bass matches, plastic for the redfish tour or the sailfish tour. They don't have that. Um, so when I approached them, they were kind of like, "Well, you think it would work?" Yeah. And I'm like, man, just watch TV for about three days. You know, watch watch a couple outdoor shows and you'll see what's going on. So. Just give me a little shot. Let me exactly. See that exactly. I think I can do this, you know. I'll give it a shot. I don't I'm know. Not, uh, you, know. you know, I'm not positive, but I think it would happen. So. <laughs> and, and so far, it's been um, it's been pretty pretty phenomenal. Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of people emailing and calling. You know, everybody wants to get in, to get in, and go. Well, like I said, when I first saw it, I can't do that. And, it's, and it's easy too, because you know, not only 
the, the my, way I look at it is I, I like to fly fish, but I'm not good at it. Yeah. And, and the reason why I don't go out in the river go fly fishing because I don't want the guy next to me that's got all the basics down pat to go over and look at me and start laughing because I don't want to be embarrassed either. So people can come out here and they can learn more about their casting and catching abilities on a fly rod in a four hour trip than they will in a year, much less some of them a lifetime. Catch more fish exactly. than they will Especially on fly. So, so it gives them a, a great opportunity to come out here and be personal, private, um, do things their own way. Uh, learn from mistakes that they're making without the embarrassment of people watching. And also, um, handicapped people, they don't, they're not oh, able yeah. to get out on boats. They have, okay, I'm sure they have a fear boats in the oh, Michigan oh. and they're able to they pull their vehicle up here, unload. But we had a guy the other day um, in a wheelchair and he caught, he probably caught 80, 90 feet. And, and, and he loved life. it, he just loved it. And uh, just, uh, you know, there's nothing like that available for him. Probably get a Christmas card yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Byron, these these uh, bear money. They're uh, I know they're a lot like a snook. They look like a mm -hmm. snook, except for they don't have a stripe. And their yep. mouths are a little bit smaller. They look like they have more meat on them. Now, are they the same as far as reproduction? Are they all females or males in the beginning well, and become females? Actually, yes. Um, right now, they're um, every fish in this pond is a male. Is a male. And until about three years or thirty pounds, right in that right in that ballpark. I'm not sure which. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a biologist, but I know it's three, three, three years of 30 pounds, uh, they'll all switch to female, about like the snook does. Um, they have to have uh, ocean run salt water to, to reproduce. They can't produce in this environment. <clears throat> you got a fish, huh? Oh, yeah. And so they, they, have to have, they have to have an ocean environment of water to, to reproduce. They're pretty finicky. So, so they are just like a snook then whenever it comes to their reproduction. Exactly. And... Yeah, exactly, exactly right. So, so if they were... You know, they none of these fish will reproduce in here, then will they? No, sir. That's 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 neat. Come here, buddy. Tarzan, he heard you, and now he's calling you. Yeah. That's right. Come on. He wants one. Yeah, I think the monkeys are going to be wanting you now. All right, come on. Here, there's the monkeys. Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Now, I bet you have a lot of people wanting to grab these across the back of their head, don't you? Only takes them one time. <laughs> <laughs> Only takes one. Yeah. I see a lot of people grab some fish in some strange ways. Yeah, uh, you wonder. You grit your teeth and, and start like, praying. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, that's usually how I get them. I just lay them on the ground there. So. Yeah, I see that. Not like a snook. You can get your hand on their side and they'll, they'll relax like a snook does, but I still don't have the nerve to do it. Yeah, because he's knowing how my hands look after I get done messing with them for four hours. so. Can you guys, you know, Cap showed you how the uh, how those gill plates look. And a little bit later, we'll show you what these gill plates actually look out of a fish that, uh, out of, oh, one of these fish. You won't believe how hard and sharp they are, you know, on the skeleton part. It's really cool looking. All right, buddy, see you later. Well, I didn't get hit by the top fin. I got <laughs> hit by the back one. <laughs> <laughs> This segment is brought to you by FishingGuidesHomepage.com. These fish in Australia, where they where they come from, they uh, they catch them all like our snook. But in the, in, in the only other difference is they catch 50 pounders on the mangrove shores. 50 so, pounders. So we're catching you know 15, 20 pound snook and you know 30, 40 is when you're lucky on a good day. Yeah. They can catch 50 pounders on the edge of the mangroves. So. Oh my word! I, I, I What's the imagine. record for one of these? I think 57 pounds on uh, uh, rod and reel on light tackle on really? tackle on rod and reel. All, all tackle class is 57 pounds, but they do reach 120 pounds, oh, 120 which is about pounds. six feet and about six feet long. So, oh, my word! Could you guys imagine catching these, something like a smoke that's these fish 120 in, pounds? in this environment, they'll, um, like I said, this time next year, you're looking at 15, 20 pound fish. Uh, a <laughs> year after, you're looking at, uh, you know, close to 30 pound range. Well, you, you, um, the biologist that's here, he's telling me, uh, he, he stated that the fish will probably reach uh, somewhere if, if they're left alone in the environment, close to 50 pounds in this environment. So. Oh. There we go. There oh, fish. that's a nice one. Heck yeah. Yeah, I have had a great time today. 
And another bear Monday, huh? I'm glad you came. Another bear Monday. Glad you're glad I came. I'm glad I found you. I tell you what, if it wasn't for some of these uh, friends that we've got on the internet, I would miss a lot of great fishing times like this one right here. Come here, big boy. Nice fish. Yeah, come on and visit me. <laughs> right up the bank. Look at that. Here you go, grab the pliers and get this hook out here, and I'll hold them out. Well, you guys. I'm here with Captain Byron Hennessy finishing out the day for some wonderful, fantastic, rod bending, Bear Monday action. We have had one fantastic day today. Osceola Outback Adventures has just, you know, I wonder what the Outback part meant. Bear Monday and bunches of them, you guys. If we, you know, if we hadn't caught 50 fish, we hadn't caught one. Not one, that's right. We caught a bunch of fish. Captain Byron Hennessy, if you guys get a chance, come down to Florida, especially if you guys are going to be down in uh, Orlando or anywhere in Florida. Just a couple hours, all you need. Yep, just a couple hours. He's right outside of Kissimmee in Osceola County. I had a great time, sir. Thank you. Thank it you was, was a blast. Well, you guys, as I always say, when you see that big fish where you're throwing an artificial or a live bait, you look at him and you tell him, chew on this. Godspeed, and I'll see you guys next week. This week's edition of Chew on This, Saltwater Fishing with Intensity has been brought to you by Legendary Lake and Bay Custom High Performance Flats Boats, Fishing Guides Homepage, Free Assistance Planning Your Trophy Fishing Trip of a Lifetime, Fish Belly Lures, at fishbelly.com, Angela Chancy, your Southwest Florida Realtor, by Avec Reels, just the best made reels, period.